Well, hello and uh, welcome to week four of our series about the life of Moses. And we have been thinking about encountering the God who is faithful. We have thought about um, life changing encounters with the living God. And last week we got to think about encountering the God who is more than enough. You know, and I got to thinking about that phrase, encountering the God who, and, you know, and it made me think. You know, to encounter is to meet face to face with, to engage with, to experience. And I really hope and pray that that is exactly what we'll get to do, that we'll encounter the living God, that we will meet with him, we will engage with him and experience him. You know, and today we are going to be thinking about the whole point of the book of Exodus the Exodus itself, how God brought his people out of Egypt, out of slavery. And we're going to be thinking about the God who makes a way. So just imagine for a moment that you are amongst those Israelites. You have miraculously got out of Egypt. You have witnessed the plagues. You have seen God leading you by a pillar of fire by night and cloud by day. And you are now standing at the shores of the Red Sea. The way ahead seems blocked. And then you turn round and you notice something catastrophic. Perhaps you hear it first the distant rumble of chariots and horses. Perhaps you feel the pounding on the ground beneath your feet, or you see the distant dust cloud that has risen up with the sheer number of horses and chariots and charioteers. You know, Exodus tells us that Pharaoh sent 600 of his best, along with the rest of his chariots, supposedly that weren't his best, Pharaoh was using the full force of his army to chase God's people down and you now realise that the distant rumble is no longer so distant and to your absolute horror you realise that it's the Egyptian army coming after you. People around you are starting to scream in fear. They turn on Moses and complain to him thinking they're going to die in the desert. And there you stand trapped you're in an almost impossible situation and it appears there's no way out. But what nobody realises at this point is that we are about to encounter the God who makes a way. And maybe today as I ask you to imagine that, you don't actually have to dig too deep. Maybe that's exactly what it feels like for you at the moment, trapped without any way through the situation you feel caught between a pharaoh and the deep red sea. I don't know what that situation is for you. Maybe it's financial, bills that just keep on mounting up and can't get paid. Maybe it's your job, relentless, day in, day out, and there seems no end to it. Maybe it's a bad habit that you just can't break, or a relationship, or parenting struggles, or a health issue. But whatever it is, you feel stuck in that impossible set of circumstances. And maybe it's not that you find yourself in an impossible situation, but that you are watching on. Maybe it's a loved one or a family member or a friend. I mean, the news out of Ukraine just gets worse each day. And in a, in a way, that whole situation seems impossible, doesn't it? It's hard to imagine that a change for the good will happen. It's impossible to think that Putin will actually change his mind and allow Ukraine to be an independent country. And as I watch on, I long to encounter the God who will make a way. And as we go back to the story, to being amongst the people as they stare at this vast expanse of water that's the Red Sea, and as they look back and see the enemy approaching, what can they do? And what can we do if we find ourselves in a situation that seems to have no way through? Well, today, I don't just want to tell you about a God who makes a way. 
either back in Moses's time or even in my own life. I don't want you to hear a story about a God who makes a way, but I pray that today you and I will actually encounter ourselves, the God who makes a way. So if we want to build our faith, if we want to build our hope, if we want to make the most of the encounter with the God who makes a way, what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do is look back. Now, the Israelites did this, but they only looked back as far as the approaching army. Now, in fairness, I think that is probably all I would have seen too. But they didn't have to look back much further to remember the miraculous way that God had brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery, how God had used the plagues and the way that they had been saved from the last and fatal plague, the death of the firstborn. They can look back and remember that he has already brought them out of an impossible situation. They can look back and see that God has done it before and he can do it again. You know, it's certainly something that Ronnie and I clung on to just four years ago when I became ill again with Emmy. And as you may well know, I have suffered four bouts of this illness, but there have been times where it seemed hopeless that there seemed no way out of it. But in the midst of those times, we had to remind ourselves of how God had brought us through before and how he had made a way, how he had healed and restored. And we had to hang on to that a lot. You know, sometimes we were clinging on with the very tips of our fingers, feeling the full weight dragging us down, but clinging on because we looked back and we saw how God had brought us through before and that he would do it again, even if it was in a different way or in a different time scale than our own. You know, when I was growing up, we used to have a guy called Godfrey Miller come and speak to our youth group and he had quite an impact upon my life. Well, his wife Ginny at the age of 50 was diagnosed with dementia and very quickly she changed and Godfrey lost the sweet, kind, loving wife that he had known. She no longer knew him, only as a complete stranger. And it was devastating for him. And he said this, he said that we have to trust in the darkness, the one we've proved in the light. We have to trust in the darkness, the one we've proved in the light. So when we face an impossible situation, when we are, we are looking to encounter the God who makes a way, we need to look back. But we also need to stand firm. And it's good to look back and remember times when God has been there for us in the past, but it's also important to stand firm in the present and let God fight for you. And if you find yourself in a situation where you are up against the sea and it has not parted for you, can I ask you to listen to the words of Moses? You see, the people were full of fear and were freaking out a bit and they had kind of turned on him. And then he says, don't be afraid, just stand firm and watch the Lord rescue you. The Lord himself will fight for you. You need only to be still. And what I found out is that to stand firm, to endure through difficult circumstances, it takes two things. It takes courage. Moses said, don't be afraid, be courageous. And so many times throughout history, God has, in has encouraged his people to be strong and courageous. Or he said, do not be afraid. It's like fear is there, and fear can hold us hostage, we can be enslaved by it, but God would say, don't be afraid, don't be full of fear, be courageous and stand firm. You see, fear is our natural response. We don't have to think of reasons to be afraid, fear comes unbidden. Being strong and courageous doesn't come naturally, and so God calls us to take courage. We have to fight for it. And when we are confronted with fears because of the circumstances we find ourselves in, or even fears from within, courage must be seized. We might feel that the situation that we're in, that there is nothing we can do. 
But there is something, there is always something, and that is to stand firm. You see, standing firm doesn't mean inactivity or doing nothing. Standing firm is a thing. It's being courageous. You might have seen the slogan, don't just stand there, do something. Well, sometimes what we need to hear is don't just do something, stand there. Because sometimes standing is all we can do. But it doesn't just take courage to stand firm, it takes faith as well. You see, Moses doesn't say to the people to stand there and fight. Rather, he says, stand and let the Lord fight for you. And what I believe God is calling us to do today is to stand firm and have faith and trust that our God can fight our battles for us better than we ever could ourselves. Now, the Israelites should have known this because God had been fighting their battles throughout this passage. You see, when the nine plagues first came, it's, um, it's easy for us to miss this as modern readers, but those plagues weren't just God being a bit creative. No, these were strategically planned and were attacking one of Egypt's gods and Egypt had a pantheon of them. Let me give you a couple of examples. The first plague challenged their god, Harpy, the Egyptian god of the Nile. And God turned the water of the river Nile into blood for seven days. The water stank, nothing could live in it, and it was obviously undrinkable. The Egyptians also worshipped a god called Heket, shaped in the form of a frog. And so what does God do? He sends vast hordes of frogs across the entire land. The river Nile swarmed with them. They came up and out of the river and into houses and bedrooms and beds. They filled ovens and kneading bowls. Then there was the god Ra, or Re, the sun god. And so what does God do for the ninth plague but turn the sun to darkness for three whole days? And what was God doing? He was showing the Egyptians who was in control. He was saying, I, the God of the Hebrew slaves, am greater than you, Pharaoh, and all the gods of Egypt put together. And what he was saying to the Israelites in their fear is that he is greater than any enemy, any fear. He was telling his people that his name was greater than Harpy, Heket, or Ra. And God would say to us today that he is still the God who is greater than any fear we may have, any enemy, any impossible situation. And because of that, he is calling us to stand firm and endure through it. Moses' last words to the people were, you only need to be still. To be still and know that he is God and that he is a God who makes a way. So let that peace rest on you right now. God is fighting for you. Stand firm, be courageous, and trust that he can fight on your behalf. So having looked back and reminded ourselves of how God has been there for us in the past, as we stand firm and endure in the present, the final thing to do is to step forward. Let's go back to Moses and what it says in Exodus 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the wind drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Now we're not told exactly how many people Moses led across that way that God had made. But scholars think that it was at least 1.66 million. And where they crossed, 
it was probably an expanse of about 10.5 miles. But what we do know for sure is that God made a way all night for the Israelites to cross. And it wasn't until the very last person was on the other side that Moses has once again raised his hand over the sea and the waters roared back into its usual place. You see, God didn't make a way for them by plucking them up from their situation and throwing them somewhere safe on the other side of the Red Sea. What he does instead is to make a way forward for them. And then they have to take that way. They have to step forward. And maybe today someone is in a situation where you've been standing firm and enduring, but you've been in, in this impossible situation for so long now that you've got stuck. And God is calling you to step forward in faith. See, often our struggle in stepping forward is that, well, we're just not sure. Sometimes it's because we're afraid of where that step will take us. Sometimes it's because we can't see the big picture and we're confused. But God wants you and me to know today that he sees the big picture so we can trust him. He knows the way forward and he will show us. He will light the way. He will provide a lamp for our feet. And God would say to us today, don't be afraid for I am with you. I am the God who is more than enough. I am faithful. I am the God who makes the way. Trust in me. If you find today yourself in an impossible situation, then let me encourage you to look back and remind yourself of all that God has done in the past, in your life, but also throughout history. He is the same God yesterday, today and forever. Also, can I encourage you to not give up, but to stand firm and endure? And finally, can you take that step forward in faith as he reveals his way to you? Because he is the God who makes a way. Shall we pray? Father, that's an incredible story that we've considered today, how you parted that sea and made a way for your people. Thank you that you are a God who makes a way. Thank you that you've made a way for us to be in a relationship with you. Thank you that Jesus is our way, that through his death and resurrection, he made a way for us to be forgiven, cleansed, healed and restored. And it's only because of him that we can come to you now. Thank you that whatever impossible situation we find ourselves in today, we can know that you are with us, that you fight for us, that you will give us the strength that we need to face each day, and you will give us the courage to step forward in your ways. Would you help us, Father, to focus on you and not on ourselves or our situation? Help us to see the God who makes a way, who is with us, who fights for us, who gives us everything we need for life. Amen. So today, will you encounter, will you come face to face, will you experience our living God working in your life? Will you encounter the God who makes a way? You know, we would love the opportunity to talk with you, listen to you, and if appropriate, pray with you. We are a church family who wants to walk through ups and downs of life together. We want to support each other, encourage each other. So if you find yourself in an impossible situation or a place of hurt, anger or frustration, or even a place of wanting to give up, please let's talk, let's pray together.